all seen evil eyes, teddy bears bent on murder, and of course, the end of the world. But which billion dollar movie was the best? The fourth film in the Transformers franchise, Age of Extinction, added Hollywood star Mark Wahlberg, which helped reinvigorate the series. In the film, a new villain emerges called Lockdown, a Transformer bounty hunter who has come to Earth to kill Optimus Prime. Unfortunately, the film quickly devolves confusing large-scale battle scenes and a mess of mind-numbing CGI, which, to be fair, is kind of the whole Transformers style. Fans burned out by Age of Extinction's excesses failed to turn up for the sequel, effectively ending the franchise. Released in 2011, Dark of the Moon is the final Transformers film to feature original series star Shia LaBeouf. In the film, it's revealed that the original Apollo mission to the moon in 1969 was actually a covert reconnaissance mission that uncovered a massive Cybertronian starship. The robot inside ends up betraying the Autobots, threatening to tip the balance of power in their cosmic war. Once again, Michael Bay worked his magic, assembling a surprisingly high-caliber supporting cast of stars, including John Malkovich and Francis McDormand. Heck, there was even an appearance from actual Apollo 11 astronaut and national hero Buzz Aldrin. And from a fellow space traveler, it's a true honor. The honor is mine. But ultimately, the film was let down by an overwrought story and over-the-top spectacle that bludgeons rather than delights. Loosely inspired by a mostly unrelated novel also named On Stranger Tides, the fourth Pirates of the Caribbean film sees Captain Jack Sparrow reunite with a former flame who delivers Sparrow into the clutches of the dreaded Blackbeard. The mission? Locate the fabled Fountain of Youth with a ship full of zombified pirates. Despite a promising premise, though, the movie doesn't live up to the chills and thrills of earlier entries in the series. It received poor reviews from fans and critics alike, causing the sequel, Dead Men Tell No Tales, to sink on arrival, ending the Jack Sparrow saga as we know it, despite his master plan to save it. We shall need a crossbow, an hourglass, three goats. One of us must learn to play the trumpet whilst the other one goes like this. To its credit, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom attempts to do something different than its predecessor, Jurassic World. After the island goes awry, our heroes gather the dinosaurs and move them to a new sanctuary at Lockwood Manor, residents of Jurassic Park's original secretive co-founder Benjamin Lockwood. But it turns out that Lockwood's minions have other, more sinister plans for the dinosaurs. Disjointed and disappointing, it coasted on its big, bold action scenes and the love audiences still had for the Jurassic Park franchise. But critics and audiences alike were unimpressed, feeling the film lacked the thrills and chills of the movies that came before it. Set decades before the original Star Wars trilogy, Star Wars Episode I The Phantom Menace follows veteran Jedi Knight Qui-Gon Jinn and his protege Obi-Wan Kenobi as they uncover a conspiracy on the far-off planet Naboo, which sets in motion a terrible chain of events that viewers knew would ultimately lead to the rise of the evil empire. The Phantom Menace expanded the galaxy with new additions like Liam Neeson, Ewan McGregor, and Natalie Portman, and some cool action scenes. Unfortunately, that couldn't save the film from stiff dialogue and backlash on characters like Jar Jar Binks. Monsters out there, leaking in here, all sinking and no power? When are you so thinking we set in trouble? The first in a new wave of Disney live-action remakes, the 2010 big-budget blockbuster Alice in Wonderland was led by celebrated director Tim Burton, who assembled a cast of stars to bring his mad retelling of the classic children's story to life. The film wasn't without its critics, who in particular called out its generic climax, but with its talented cast, outrageous style, and eccentric visuals, audiences largely embraced the film, helping spur Disney to create a slew of live-action remakes in the decade that followed. After a divisive fan reaction to the second of Disney's Star Wars sequel trilogy, Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi, J.J. Abrams was rushed back into the director's chair for Star Wars Episode IX, The Rise of Skywalker. The result was an ambitious but haphazard attempt to tie together four decades of continuity in a way that was satisfying for obsessed fans, and some fans were happy to get any answers to long-standing questions and resolutions to ongoing character arcs, not to mention some breakneck action. Unfortunately, critics were less than enthused and largely knocked the film for messy script, choppy storytelling, and one too many confusing plot points. In Despicable Me 3, lovable former supervillain Gru now works as an agent for the Anti-Villain League tracking down other baddies and thwarting their evil schemes. When a job goes wrong, Gru is fired from the ABL, even losing his beloved minions in the process. But just when he's struggling with what to do next, he comes face to face with his long-lost twin brother, Drew, who wants lessons on how to be a supervillain. And it doesn't go great. I should have stayed in the boat. My stomach feels all queasy. I shouldn't have eaten that pot pie. Though a massive hit in theaters, Despicable Me 3 split audiences and critics, who felt it was a little too much of the same. 
Going into this live-action remake of the beloved 1994 animated classic The Lion King, many were skeptical that director Jon Favreau could bring anything new to the table. But the result was a lush visual feast, with audiences eating up the awe-inspiring CGI visuals created using innovative and groundbreaking new virtual filmmaking techniques. Critics, however, were dismissive of what they considered a soulless, lackluster remake of an indelible original. Even the return of the legendary James Earl Jones as King Mufasa wasn't enough to elevate the final film. One day, Simba, the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. The breakout stars of the Despicable Me franchise, the pint-sized, overall-wearing yellow beans called Minions, got their own movie in the wake of Despicable Me 2. A prequel to the first Despicable Me, the Minions movie gives audiences the secret origin of the little pill-shaped people, as we follow their origins from single-celled organisms all the way up to them meeting the supervillain Gru. Taking the Minions out of Despicable Me and putting them into their own mini-franchise could have gone terribly wrong, but with a cast of impeccable voice actors including Sandra Bullock and John Hamm, it worked surprisingly well. After the blockbuster success of other live-action remakes, Disney looked to their 1992 film Aladdin for their next big hit. Before the 2019 live-action version even arrived, though, it was mired in controversy over the way star Will Smith looked when animated as a CGI-enhanced blue genie. But once Aladdin landed in theaters, audiences turned out in droves to see the sprawling fantasy epic. Fans gave the young cast high marks for infusing their characters with heart and earnestness, but critics panned the film, once again questioning what the point of these live-action remakes was. Aquaman, released in 2018, opens with the origin of DC's famous seafaring superhero. The son of a lighthouse captain and a stranded woman from Atlantis, young Arthur Curry is left to be raised on land, ultimately wanting no part of his watery legacy. But when a villain threatens war with the surface world, Curry must finally confront his destiny in order to stop them. Led by Jason Momoa, Nicole Kidman, and Willem Dafoe, the all-star cast gave the film major acting talent to go with a pumped-up action spectacle from director James Wan. Brains, however, could be safely shut off for the duration of the runtime. Pinocchio, you risked our lives based on something you read in a children's book? Wait, it's a book? The eighth film in the long-running Fast and the Furious series, The Fate of the Furious reunited stars Vin Diesel and Dwayne The Rock Johnson in a battle with newcomer Charlize Theron as the villain Cypher. In this installment of the seemingly never-ending franchise, Dom Toretto's retirement is upended when he's blackmailed into working for the baddies. The old crew must band together to discover why Toretto has seemingly turned villain. With some shocking twists and new revelations, Fate of the Furious continued upping the ante, with even bigger and bolder action sequences than ever before. Based on the original book by J.R.R. Tolkien, The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey expands greatly on the story. We meet a homebody hobbit named Bilbo as he is recruited by Gandalf on a quest to help a group of determined dwarves to find a lost treasure. Along the way, he picks up a little gold ring that will one day change the fate of all Middle-earth. With Peter Jackson back at the helm, an unexpected journey is full of delightful adventure. Overfull, in fact. It's also bloated and indulgent, leading to a flabby viewing experience that turned off fans and critics alike. The 2017 live-action remake of the 1991 adaptation of the 18th-century French fairy tale Beauty and the Beast brought the fantasy, starring Harry Potter's Emma Watson and Luke Evans of The Hobbit. And it tells the same story you go in expecting to see. Belle's father is taken prisoner by a beast, she exchanges places with him, and unexpected love ensues. Once again, Disney pulled out all the stops, loading the film up on luscious eye candy and top-rate cinematography that dazzled moviegoers, earning it impressive reviews to go with a wave of comforting nostalgia. It's not often that a sequel can reach the height of its predecessor, but Frozen 2 broke the mold, releasing in 2019 to rave reviews and ultimately becoming nearly as beloved as 2013's original Frozen. Frozen 2 is another frosty musical tale that reveals the secret origin of Elsa's powers and the truth behind the death of her parents. Funny, romantic, bittersweet, the film mixes every emotion with gorgeous 3D animation while somehow telling a more nuanced and complex drama than the first, without feeling weighted down or overstuffed with story. It's a testament to Disney's finest storytellers that they were able to recapture the magic of Frozen. Robert Downey Jr. returned in 2013's Iron Man 3 as Tony Stark, now dealing with the traumatic after-effects of the alien invasion shown in 2012's Avengers. But he also has to deal with a new threat in the form of a notorious global criminal kingpin called the Mandarin who turns out to not exactly be what he seems. Killian. He created you. He created me. Custom-made terror threat. Yes! With some of the best Iron Man action to date, the excitement and drama was all there, with some added heart and depth thanks to writer-director Shane Black. 
Still, the surprising twist regarding the Mandarin's true nature riled a lot of fans, leaving many with decidedly mixed feelings. After the overwhelming success of 2015 Star Wars Episode 7: The Force Awakens, Disney turned the keys of the franchise over to Looper director Ryan Johnson for the sequel. He succeeded in taking the franchise in a bold new direction with Star Wars Episode 8: The Last Jedi. For many viewers, though, it was the wrong direction, as Rey discovers that the legendary Luke Skywalker has given up and become a mopey cynic, adding the slowest chase scene in sci-fi history and a general disregard for everything that happened in the previous film, and you end up with a movie that was appreciated more by critics than fans. <laughs> The 2012's Avengers was a massive success, so for the 2015 sequel Avengers Age of Ultron, Marvel brought back everyone, including director Joss Whedon. And then they stuffed it full of even more characters, introducing the Vision, Quicksilver, and Scarlet Witch to help battle the new threat to the monstrous robot Ultron. While some fans praise the action and character moments in the film, others felt Age of Ultron was a bit bogged down by excessive world-building at the expense of the story. The world it built, though, would help take the MCU to undreamt heights. Not many franchises make it to seven films, but the truly amazing thing about Furious 7 is that it nearly doubled the box office of Fast and Furious 6, turning the popular series into an absolute unit. In the film, Dom Toretto and his crew are confronted by Jason Statham's Deckard Shaw, the vengeance-seeking brother of Fast and Furious 6 villain Owen Shaw. The movie was also the final entry for series star Paul Walker, who was tragically killed in an unrelated car accident while the film was in production. Thanks to the cooperation of his family and a little CGI magic, producers were able to complete his performance and give the actor a touching send-off that proved an emotional moment for fans. 2003's Pirates of the Caribbean – The Curse of the Black Pearl proved audiences would turn out for a movie based on a Disney-themed park ride. And the 2006 sequel Dead Man's Chest proved audiences couldn't get enough of Johnny Depp's antics as Captain Jack Sparrow. In this one, Will is ordered to help find Jack and in turn the fabled Dead Man's Chest, at the request of the corrupt Lord Beckett, all while fighting off the legendary Davy Jones and his mystical pirate ship the Flying Dutchman. So big it couldn't get out of its own way, Dead Man's Chest set the franchise on a course for the many hits that followed. In 2016, Star Wars went where it had never gone before, releasing a standalone live-action theatrical film set outside of the main saga. Rogue One, a Star Wars story, told the story of how the Rebellion and A New Hope got the Death Star plans to begin with, with recruits Jyn Erso and Cassian Andor leading a suicide mission to set the stage for the fall of the Empire. A darker, grittier take on the franchise, Rogue One was celebrated for its grittier take on the mythos, and has been lauded by some hardcore fans as the best of the recent Star Wars films. Released in 2009, the sci-fi adventure Avatar left viewers' jaws on the floor with its immersive vision of a far-off alien world. The film is centered on a race of blue-skinned natives called the Na'vi, as their home is invaded by greedy corporate mercenaries who want to steal their resources. Filmed using a new groundbreaking 3D technology, Avatar proved a movie-going experience unlike any other, driving fans into theaters in numbers nobody had ever thought possible. More than a decade later, it's still the top-grossing film of all time. The third in director Christopher Nolan's trilogy, The Dark Knight Rises, finished off what many considered to be the greatest comic book movie series ever produced. Set almost a decade after the previous film, Rises finds Bruce Wayne retired when a new and more insidious villain called Bane shows up on the scene. When Bane's plot to destroy Gotham proves too much for him, he's forced to sacrifice everything to save the city. While for many, The Dark Knight Rises could never live up to The Dark Knight, it still remained a satisfying and action-packed conclusion to the three-film saga, neatly tying the whole story together. The 2019 sci-fi superhero actioner Captain Marvel was the first MCU film with a woman lead. The film is set in the 1990s, when a valiant space ranger crash lands on Earth and discovers she's actually a human woman named Carol Danvers. With the help of a younger Nick Fury, Danvers must recover her lost memories and uncover the truth behind the conflict between two warring alien races. Fans' expectations for the film were so high that they proved impossible to meet, but Captain Marvel remains a solid entry in the MCU, and better than it's often given credit for. After the original Jurassic Park trilogy petered out in 2001, it would be 14 years before Jurassic World rebooted the franchise. The 2015 tentpole brought in new stars Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard for a story about, you guessed it, dinosaurs running rampant through a tropical island theme park. Only this time, the park is filled with thousands of tourists for maximum carnage. Debuting with good reviews from both critics and audiences, Jurassic World was lauded for its successful mix of modern thrills and classic Jurassic Park storytelling, ultimately leading to two sequels of its own. 
The first film to ever earn a billion dollars at the box office, 1997's Titanic featured Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet as star-crossed lovers Jack and Rose. The poor Jack and the rich Rose find true love just as the doomed ship famously strikes an iceberg and pulls most of the film's all-star cast straight to the bottom. Jack! This is where we first met! A tale of love, lust, betrayal, and revenge set against the backdrop of one of history's greatest ocean disasters, the film has something for everyone. It's no wonder it has remained a beloved classic for a quarter of a century. Director Todd Phillips turned 2019's The Joker into a gritty and grounded psychological drama and an incisive and surprising takedown of modern life. Touching on such weighty issues as the mental health system and wealth inequality, star Joaquin Phoenix turned the clown-faced supervillain into a deeply troubled soul who resorts to violence when society turns its back on him. The result struck a chord with audiences who flocked to see the timely film despite few action scenes and almost no big special effects. Unsurprisingly, a sequel was announced in 2022 and is already in the works. The 2019 blockbuster Spider-Man Far From Home didn't just build on the legacy of the previous six Spider-Man films, it also provided the first follow-up to the cataclysmic events of the MCU-defining Avengers Endgame. A story about Peter dealing with grief after the loss of mentor Tony Stark and a surprising betrayal by new mentor Mysterio allowed fans to process their own feelings of grief over the death of Iron Man. Mixing coming-of-age teen drama with high-stakes superhero action, Far From Home showed that the MCU was now centered around a new figure, and Spider-Man was up to the task. Based on the series of hit young adult fantasy novels, 2001's Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone introduces audiences to a young orphaned boy sent to attend Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. There, he meets new friends who help him discover the truth when a terrible evil begins threatening him in the school. We know about the Sorcerer's Stone! Oh. While the film wasn't as refined or slick as its successors would be, it drew audiences of all ages with its fantasy thrills, family-friendly adventure, and magical mystery, and turned unknown child actors Daniel Radcliffe, Emma Watson, and Rupert Grint into international stars. Another blockbuster from the MCU, 2016's Captain America Civil War saw the Avengers dealing with the aftermath of a mission gone wrong. When Cap's old sidekick Bucky, now the Winter Soldier, is accused of killing the Wakandan King, our heroes are forced to choose just whose side they're on, Cap's or Iron Man's. In addition to bringing back old favorites, the film introduced two big new players for the first time. Chadwick Boseman makes his first appearance as the Black Panther, while Marvel also introduced Spider-Man into the MCU. Between the big superhero debuts, the over-the-top hero-on-hero action, this one was a crowd-pleaser. Based on the novel by author Michael Crichton, 1993's Jurassic Park was quickly optioned for a big-budget feature film by none other than Steven Spielberg. He ditched the book's hard science in favor of an awe-inspiring adventure, with groundbreaking special effects that made dinosaurs more real than ever before. Your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. When dinosaurs are cloned, hero scientists Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldblum have to stop them from running amok. One of the most thrilling and unexpected big-screen joyrides in movie history on its release, audiences and critics were in awe of the movie billed as 65 million years in the making. They could do it, and it turned out they should. In an unparalleled and monumental undertaking, the fledgling Marvel Studios set out to craft the first-ever true cinematic universe. After the films Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk, Captain America, and Thor introduced the individual heroes, 2012's The Avengers brought them all together in a way never seen in movies before. The story? Stop Loki and his alien army from conquering Earth. A sharply written, slickly executed action blockbuster, not a moment is wasted in the superhero adventure, which thrilled audiences and set the stage for a decade of box office dominance by Marvel. It all came to this, 2021 Spider-Man No Way Home brought back characters from all seven previous Sony and Marvel Spider-Man films, as the Spider-Man of three universes banded together to try and save the MCU's Peter Parker from his own mistakes. Fans thrilled to see Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield stand shoulder to shoulder with Tom Holland as they fought a menagerie of villains from all three realities. With enough Easter eggs and guest stars to force fans into theaters despite a global pandemic, No Way Home proved one of the biggest crowd-pleasers Marvel has ever produced. Loosely inspired by Hans Christian Andersen's The Snow Queen, 2013's Frozen centers on Elsa, who fears her own icy supernatural powers, and has grown estranged from her younger sister Anna as a result. But when Elsa unwittingly unleashes her powers and covers the kingdom in an icy winter, Anna must rekindle their relationship to save everyone. 
With memorable musical numbers and a timeless story of family, Frozen became an instant classic. Crossing age and gender lines, it was beloved by audiences of all stripes, helping it become an unexpected billion-dollar hit. 2003's Finding Nemo was a massive blockbuster and an instant family classic, but it would be more than a decade before Pixar followed up with 2016's Finding Dory, which follows Nemo's forgetful friend Dory as she sets out to regain her memory and find her long-lost parents. And along the way, she inevitably meets a host of new animated undersea buddies. Finding Dory was the rare sequel to be not only a bigger earner than its predecessor, but an equally crowd-pleasing film, as fans and critics alike praised it for its heartwarming story. 2004's The Incredibles was one of Pixar's most beloved films, so it's no surprise that fans turned out in droves for the 2018 sequel The Incredibles 2. After the fallout from the first film's climactic battle, the government shuts down their superhero program. But when a wealthy tycoon offers Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl the chance to become heroes again, they jump at the chance, only for Elastigirl to uncover a sinister plot to end all superheroes for good. With loads of superhero action, delightful comedy, and classic Pixar hearts, Incredibles 2 was a hit in every sense of the word. For a full decade, audiences watched Harry Potter, Hermione Granger, and Ron Weasley grow up on screen as they fought to stop the return of the Wizarding World's greatest villain, Lord Voldemort. It all culminated in 2011's Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, as the eighth and final film in the series saw our heroes take on Voldemort's army in the Battle of Hogwarts. Deathly Hallows Part 2 was not only the highest-grossing film in the franchise, it was also the most critically acclaimed, earning three Academy Award nominations and a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. They truly saved the best for last. After Disney bought the rights to Star Wars in 2012, it was inevitable that new movies were coming. The first was 2015 Star Wars Episode 7: The Force Awakens, which brought back original characters Han, Leia, and Luke, and paired them with a new generation of heroes in the form of Rey, Finn, and Poe. While it was knocked for being something of a rehash, fans loved the familiar, and critics praised the picture for re-energizing the franchise with a promising new story. Set in a world of anthropomorphic talking animals, 2016's animated smash Zootopia features Judy Hopps, an upbeat bunny who enlists in the local police force. Through a series of mishaps, she winds up stuck with Nick Wilde, a jaded fox con artist who wants anything but to be paired with Hopps. They soon uncover a major conspiracy that threatens the city and must work together to get to the truth. Mixing elements from the best buddy cop comedies with the charms of the best animated family films, Zootopia ultimately won the Academy Award for Best Animated Film. Combining every major Marvel franchise with heroes from the Avengers, the Guardians of the Galaxy, and the recently incorporated Spider-Man, 2018's Avengers Infinity War saw Thanos arrive on Earth to complete his collection of Infinity Stones, the powerful ancient relics that will give him the power to wipe out half of all life in the universe. An edge-of-your-seat thrill ride from start to finish, the movie managed to mix dozens of heroes and villains together in a story with a vast canvas. It satisfied fans of every character and delivered something bolder and bigger than anyone imagined, subverting expectations with a twist ending that left audiences gasping in disbelief. After 50 years and 23 films, 2012's Skyfall marked the first James Bond movie to crack the billion-dollar mark. In the darkest installment yet, a critical mission goes wrong, and MI6 is compromised. Daniel Craig's Bond is the only agent left that can be trusted, and is tasked with tracking down and stopping a madman named Silva, an insidious threat from M's past who has come back for revenge. Buoyed by newcomers like Ray Fiennes, the film was a tight, gripping spy thriller of the highest caliber, and many fans and critics still consider it the high point of modern Bond films. Released in 2019, Toy Story 4 was an unexpected sequel, as the beloved franchise was seemingly over for good. Luckily, it wasn't. While on a road trip with their new owner, Woody is reunited with his old flame Bo Peep, who tries to get him to run away with her. Now, Woody must decide whether he wants a future with a child, as he has always believed was intended, or the freedom of a new life as a rogue toy. Once again, Pixar knocked it out of the park with fans and critics alike. Now, the only question is whether there will ever be a Toy Story 5. Combining lush, vibrant, and expressive animation with a number of iconic new songs and powerful storytelling, 1994's The Lion King was a worldwide sensation. In this animated Shakespearean tragedy, young cub prince Simba runs in fear after his uncle Scar murders his father, King Mufasa. But when Simba's childhood friend Nala finds him, he is urged to return to the pride and save his former home from the cruelty of his uncle. One of the most acclaimed and beloved films of all time, The Lion King has enjoyed multiple re-releases over the years to help it cross the billion-dollar mark. 
Marvel Comics' first black superhero debuted in 1966 in the pages of Fantastic Four, but it would take until 2017 for Black Panther to get his own feature film. Expectations were through the roof, but even the most fervent fans were blown away by director Ryan Coogler's vision of Afrofuturism. But it was actor Chadwick Boseman who provided the heart to this story, which centers around a challenge to the ideologies of Wakanda by T'Challa's cousin Killmonger. Tragically, Bozeman passed away in 2020 at the age of 43, leaving an indelible legacy behind. 2008's The Dark Knight is one of the most critically acclaimed superhero films of all time. Heath Ledger stars as the Joker, who sets out to prove humanity isn't worth saving by exposing all the hypocrisy, greed, and selfishness beneath the surface of Gotham City. Directed by Christopher Nolan and starring Christian Bale as Batman, The Dark Knight was a tour de force. Tragically, star Heath Ledger died just months before release, but he'd get the last laugh on his doubters as his performance earned him a posthumous Oscar. 36 years after the original Top Gun debuted in theaters, 2022's Top Gun Maverick blew audiences' expectations out of the sky with the return of Tom Cruise's legendary fight pilot Pete Maverick Mitchell. Called back into service to help train a group of young recruits for a crucial mission behind enemy lines, Maverick gets more than he bargained for when he learns one of the cadets is the son of his old friend Goose, who died in an accident for which he has long felt responsible. My dad believed in you. I'm not going to make the same mistake. Praised by critics, Top Gun Maverick soared to become one of the best-reviewed films of the year and the best of Tom Cruise's long career. The culmination of more than a decade of films, 2019's Avengers Endgame might be the most highly anticipated superhero movie ever, coming a year after Infinity War left fans stunned by Thanos' victory and the loss of half of our heroes. Avengers Endgame sees the surviving heroes engage in a desperate time heist to try and alter reality itself. But Thanos has other plans, only stopped when Tony Stark sacrifices himself to save the entire universe from oblivion. Featuring action on a scale never before imagined, Endgame was the ultimate theater experience for an entire generation. Coming out a decade after Toy Story 2, 2010's Toy Story 3 sees the toys from Andy's room mistakenly donated to a daycare center, where the plush monstrosity Lotso Hugging Bear rules with terror. Woody, Buzz, and the rest must band together to lead a toy rebellion in order to save themselves from certain doom. Receiving universal critical acclaim, Toy Story 3 served as a perfect conclusion to the story of Woody, Buzz, and the gang. Of course, another sequel eventually followed, and a fifth may be on the way, but Toy Story 3 still remains the best-reviewed film of the series. The Lord of the Rings The Return of the King capped off the epic fantasy film trilogy from director Peter Jackson in 2003. The final film in the series sees Sam and Frodo making their final journey to the steps of Mount Doom, while Aragorn, Gandalf, and an army of men confront Sauron's forces in a final showdown between the forces of good and evil. A box office smash, Return of the King put a perfect bow on the Lord of the Rings film saga. Not only is it the highest grossing film in the series, it also took home the Academy Award for Best Picture, the only fantasy film to ever do so. You bow to no one. 